Hi, I'm Eric Pratt from US Broadcast, and today we're going to take a close look at the Kiloview E1. It is an SDI to NDI converter, but it does so many other things that we need to take a really in-depth look at all of the other features because it can control PDZ cameras, it can stream to Facebook, it can record to USB devices. So it's kind of a multifunctional all-in-one device. So we're going to open this box up and take a look at what's inside. I'm going to use my new Ada 3X 4K zoom uh, as my overhead camera uh, to open up my Kiloview box. So here we've got the packaging and I'm going to open it up, take out this nicely packed foam device here wrapped in its electrostatic sensitive bag and take the unit out. So this is the Kiloview encoder. What else is in here? Some manuals, some power supplies, and other things. But let's take a close look at the unit. This is the box itself. And as we can see on the top, it's an SDI encoder. And it says NDI HX, E1, Kiloview, power signal run. These are indicator lights for on the side. So let's take a look at what's going on over here. This has got a 12 volt power, USB for firmware updates, um, audio out and audio in. So you can put up headphones here and you can run the audio from your camera into this or other device. This is um, signal activity. And then we have SDI in, loop through, ethernet, and then these are the three LEDs that correspond to power signal and running. On the other side, we've got a power switch, two USB ports, which we'll get into in a bit, and an SD card reader. So with that, let's hook it up and see what it does. So I've hooked the unit up with the connectors that you would expect. Ethernet, SDI, power. Uh, this is a PTZ USB to serial cable, uh, which is connected over to here. And then this is a USB stick, so I can show you recording. Um, so first and foremost, this is an NDI unit. So let's take a look at adding this as NDI to vNix. Adding an NDI feed into vNix is pretty easy. I'm just gonna go to add input and then click NDI. And I'll have a list of other NDI inputs here, but down here we can see the Kiloview NDI. This one's labeled channel one. That's configurable, but um, that's what it's labeled for for now. And click OK. And we can see this relatively unflattering shot from our PTZ camera coming in via NDI. Now I'm gonna take you through the E1's web UI, which is where much of the configuration for things like recording, streaming, and uh, PTZ control are done. So giving you an overview of the dashboard uh, has a lot of information, how long the unit's been on, um, how much the CPU it's using. Um, and this is kind of an important factor because the E1 is not just doing uh, SDI to NDI. It can also do um, streaming and recording, all of which um, can take up memory and uh, CPU. So going down through this, um, it gives you information about uh, what the SDI signal is, and it gives you a little picture of the shot that's coming in. It's, uh, it updates it every five seconds. So it um, uh, tells you what that is. And this is also configurable. Um, and this is just for the preview. And then down here, this is the mainstream. This is the stream that uh, is actually being um, sent out via NDI. So it's important what the resolution is and we can go into settings of that and we can set how the NDI stream is being set from right now. It's set uh, to uh, two megs. Um, I can put it up to 10 pretty easily here. So this is a, a 10 meg stream or I can go all the way up to say 40. Um, how the frame rate is, uh, whether we're using constant bitrate or variable bitrate. Variable bitrate will help save a lot of bandwidth um, at the cost of um, issues in the you know low contrast areas. You'll see more compression there. Um, going back to the dashboard and uh, scrolling down to Back to our mainstream, we also have the recording setup here. So if I go into controls, um, this is 
the format it's going to be recorded in. We have MPEG-TS, MP4, MOV, uh, Matroska, AVI, and how it's uh, what the file prename um, file prefix is going to be, and what to do if we you know run out of space, uh, you know overwrite old records. Do we want to limit the size of each file? Uh, what do we want to use as the default? Um, so if we have multiple disks put uh, plugged in, what do we want it to record to by default? Um, so those are the settings for record, um, some advice over here as well. And then um, this is where we can start and stop record. Uh, there's also, I mentioned, an Android app for starting and stopping record, which is uh, handy, but it gives you a little bit of information of what I'm going to record in. I'm going to record to the USB storage, um, how much, how long, etc. cetera. Um, another important element here is how to add a stream. So I can um, click add a stream here and pick from a list of streams like RTMP, which is what we would use to push to Facebook or YouTube or any CDN. Uh, if I choose RTMP pushing, it's going to bring me up. Um, it's going to add another um, stream here, which I can configure. So these are the different functions of the, uh, the, the different elements of the stream. So we can add in, you know, the stream key and the stream name and um, username and password. So I've added that, but I haven't started it. Uh, under the substream, I also added uh, RTMP. And the reason why I did that is because I want a different um, bit rate, uh, sorry, different resolution to stream to Facebook. So for the substream, I've set it at 1280 by 720 because Facebook doesn't like 1920 by 1080. So I'm doing NDI at 1920 by 1080. I'm recording at 1920 by 1080, but I'm doing my um, streaming to Facebook using the RTMP uh, of the 720 uh, substream. So that's um, that's in a rough nutshell how recording and streaming works. Uh, there's also a PTZ function. So what I've done is I've set up, I've, I've got a USB to serial cable, and uh, most of these are defaults uh, for all PTZ cameras, but some uh, might require different baud rates and data bits, uh, so on and so forth. But this, the defaults are going to be the bulk. And then um, I'm using an ADA PTZ camera, and I have it set to Sony Visco, but I could also communicate via Pelco. And then I have my PTZ address uh, set as one, and then my speeds. So I'm going to open up my PTZ control panel, and then I'm going to cut over to my other camera. So once again, this is the USB cable that is going off down here, and then it's coming back up and into the first port, uh, the serial port of the camera. And if I pull up the control panel in the uh, Kiloview web UI, I can control the PTZ head, you know, where it's facing, zoom, focus. Uh, I can create presets and step through them. So that's controlled via the um, the control panel. Uh, we also have the ability to control it remotely using uh, ONVIF, which is a network security protocol. And we can send uh, data from the ONVIF and control multiple kiloview uh, encoders that way. So we can use the web UI, uh, we can use the Android app, and then we can also use um, ONVIF currently for controlling this unit remotely. So the ability to control um, serial PTZ cameras is a nice addition because now we've taken this non-IP camera and turned it into an NDI camera with PTZ control remotely over IP, all from this one unit. The Kiloview app is uh, the most convenient way of working with the unit on set. Uh, it gives you a nice little um, snapshot of what the um, NDI source is seeing. It gives you the um, figures about uh, how it's being encoded and the resolution. It lets you control streams. So if I want to look at the different streams that I have configured, um, it lets me start and stop record. So it's currently recording. And then it also lets me set up things like my network. And it also lets me control things like my video source. And um, Lastly, we can also reset, reboot, uh, and restore to factory settings here and set the name of the device. So the um, app gives you a lot of control uh, just from your 
cell phone, so it's a really handy addition. It doesn't uh, cost anything, so it's um, a really neat solution for controlling the Kiloview unit. And that, my friends, is the Kiloview E1. They also make a wide range of other little boxes that are just as amazing. And if you'd like to find out more information, please visit our website, usbroadcast.co. And if you have any more uh, questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at eric at usbroadcast.co or check out our website, YouTube channel, Facebook, and all the other methods that we get our information out. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.